School, the Honorable Speakers, Dr. Abu Hanifa Ayob from University Kebangsaan Malaysia, and Dr. Bayu Arifianto from Universitas Erlangga. The Honorable Participants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Ibu Deti. Welcome to our webinar with title How to Convert Thesis into Journal Article Index by Scopus. My name is Deti Nur Fadila, Head of Research at ITMI International Business School. And am I excited to be moderator for this session today? This webinar is a collaboration between IPMI International Business School, Faculty of Economics and Business, Universitas Erlangga, Faculty of Economics and Management, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. I would like to welcome all participants from Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Pakistan, and Philippines who join with us through Zoom. And we are also now live streaming on a YouTube channel IPMI campus. Before we begin, allow me to read some rules for all participants in this webinar. First, all participants must mute the audio when the webinar is starting, and then all participants will be given time to ask questions by using the chat feature. And the last, while participants are required to attend the event completely and fill up the feedback form for our evaluation purpose to get an e-certificate. The link will be given at the question and answer sessions. This webinar will start with open speech, then we will have good discussion about the transition from an academic thesis to a publishable paper in Scopus Index. We also will discuss about other issues relating to selecting an appropriate journal, writing up, publication, and citation. And then we will have the final 20 minutes for question and answer sessions. So if you have any questions, please use the chat feature. Please stay with us till the end to get the valuable knowledge from the speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker. The first speaker is Abu Hanifa bin Ayo PhD. Is an associate professor in Faculty of Economics and Management at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. He is also an associate editor for UKM Journal of Management Index by Scopus. In his career history, he was postdoctoral researcher at Toulouse Business School and Copenhagen Business School. He also was a visiting scholar at School of Management, Boston University. He graduated from Toulouse One Capital University, France, a PhD degree in management, Toulouse Business School, France, for a master degree in Malaysian management, and University of Technology, Petronas, Malaysia, for a bachelor degree. During his career, he received many awards for best presentation in International Colloquium on Research, Innovation and Social Entrepreneurship 2019, UKM Excellent Service Award 2019, Silver Medal from Malacca International Intellectual Exposition, Exposition 2019, Bronze Medal from ICIPTA, and Bronze Medal from International Science and Social Science Innovation Competition. His recent careers are international entrepreneurship and business. He has received 15 research grants and has published several articles in Scopus Index Journals and presented a number of papers in various international conferences. With great pleasure, I would like to welcome you and thank you for spending your time with us today, Dr. Abu. The second speaker, Dr. Bayu Arifianto from Universitas Erlangga. He is currently an assistant professor at the Department of Sharia Economics. He graduated from Lincoln University, New Zealand with PhD in Finance, International Islamic University, Malaysia for Master of Business Administration, specialization in Islamic Banking and Finance and Brahmajaya University for Bachelor Degree in Management Science. He received awards as the first winner for the most outstanding lecture in social science at the Universitas Erlangga, first winner for postgraduate conference, faculty agribusiness and commerce, Lincoln University, New Zealand. He has published chef several articles in Scopus Index Journals, National Accredited Journal, International Book Chapter, and presented a number of papers in various international conferences. 
He is also reviewer for International Journal Index by Scopus Q1 and Cape Q2. With great pleasure, I would like to welcome you and thank you for spending your time with us today, Dr. Bayu. Thank you. So without any further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Wiwi Mardawia Dayanto, the Director of Research and Community Services at IPNI International Business School to deliver the opening speech. Dr. Wiwi, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Ibu Depi Nurfadila, as a moderator of this prestigious seminar. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and also good morning, Mr. Abu Hanif Ayok, and also Mr. Bayu Arif Yanto as the speakers of today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, let us thanks to the Almighty God for His blessing that we are all here in a healthy condition during the pandemic COVID-19. Um, this uh, webinar are attended by participants from the five countries, the Philippines, Pakistan, India, uh, Malaysia, and also Indonesia. The topic of the webinar is how to convert thesis into article journals index by Scopus. But uh, first of all, my name is uh, WVM Dar Daryanto, I am the Director of Research and Community Empowerment of the school, and I'm here re represent the Executive di Director of Sekolah Tinggi Management IPMI or IPMI International Business School, Professor Aman Wirakarta Kusumah. And especially we would like to welcome our valued honorable speakers today. Mr. Abu Hanifa Ayo, PhD, Associate Editor of UKM Journal of Management or Scopus, and Associate Professor at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. And also Mr. Bayu Arifianto, PhD, Assistant Professor at the University Erlangga, Surabaya. Also welcome all the participants from the five countries. Enjoy the webinar, and uh, maybe uh, correct me if I'm not wrong. From the honorable speakers, that I have a, I have a PowerPoint. How about the benefit of attending this webinar? Please, I would like to help Ibu Depi. Mic-nya belum Bu Deti. Ya, bentar ya Pak. Ya, oke. Okay, uh, I'm actually a lecturer of accounting and finance. Next Bu Deti. <laughs> This is my... And next, okay, uh, correct me, uh, the speakers of today, this is uh, maybe the benefit of uh, how to convert thesis into article journals. The benefit uh, can be classified into three category. The first benefit for the school, number one, to multiply the number of publication to achieve the higher recognition from the government. And number two, to improve the school branding and competitiveness uh, through the research publications. And number three, to improve the quality of the students. And number four, to build the awareness of the students of the importance of the publication. And next. And also uh, the benefit for the thesis mentor, of course, this is to multiply the number of publications I did also since uh, 2018 and to achieve the highest rank to become a professor and to recognize 
the good collaboration between students and lecturers. And number four, to come up with new ideas to develop further research and to introduce students how of the importance of publications. Okay, next please. And uh, from the point of view of the students, the benefits are to multiply the number of publication to be added to uh, his or her curriculum vitae, especially as the first author to apply the new job. And number two, to recognize the good collaboration between students and lecturers. And number three, to come up with new ideas to develop further research and also to fulfill the requirement to achieve cum laude requirement. Okay, I think uh, those are benefits that I can summarize, but of course, uh, the summary uh, that this is also the Amal Jaria for all of us if we publish our knowledge to all people throughout the world. Uh, lastly, I would like to welcome all the participants and especially also for the author and enjoy the webinar of today. Of today. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The time is open to Ibu Deti. Okay, thank you, Bu Wiwi, for your uh, excellent speech. Now we are moving to uh, discussion sessions about how to convert thesis into journal articles indexed by Scopus. Some universities require the students publish their final research in peer review journals prior to being considered eligible to graduate. If we are planning to progress from the post graduate course to a career as an academy or as a researcher, then having some work published from our research is almost essential. So the question is, how to change the format of thesis into journal? And is there any certain requirements when converting the thesis into journal? Dr. Bayu, over to you. Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mrs. Deti and Dr. Vivi Daryanto as the head of research. And uh, thank you me for the invitation for this uh, forum. Uh, it's a pleasure for me for sharing my experience uh, to convert or turning thesis into the journal article. Could you see my PPT? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes okay, so uh, this morning, I just want to share my experience during my PhD. Uh, period in New Zealand, especially to turning my thesis into journal article. Uh, I noticed that probably some of you coming from the university, yeah, so academic staff, and some of you may be students doing the uh, thesis right now. So this one only my uh, experience for turning a uh, thesis into uh, article. So. This is the outline for my presentation today. So first is the crucial part of our manuscript. So what's usually the reviewer or editor in chief look at? Essential question for writing articles, tips for turning thesis into uh, into articles, review process, think, and things to avoid the in the slide, review. Uh, Dr. Bayu. Yes, sorry. Your, your PowerPoint. Please. Could you see? Yeah. Uh, yeah, please share your PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've shared my PowerPoint with Mrs. Deti, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay I will share the screen. Oh, share screen. Okay, okay. Uh, wait. I just want to stop uh, this one. How about right now? Could you see my uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. So this is my thesis actually in the middle. If you can see my thesis uh, can produce around six outcome. 
So four articles in the Scopus Index Journal, one book chapter and one patent. Yeah. So if you can see over here, and this is not instant. So we need a lot of practice and process. So I also receive some questions, and the process is not instant. So uh, so for you that right now doing your thesis or dissertation. It is uh, essential for you to, to put extra effort and work, consult with your supervisor, uh, doing the good process of thesis to produce good thesis. Then we can break down into the uh, some pub publication. So why this publication is important? So as mentioned by Dr. Rivi Darianto, so this publication uh, refer to the good process of uh, our PhD or our master by research probably yeah because uh, if we submit to the journal then it is a good journal it will be uh, goes to the our article we goes to the uh, review process yeah. usually double blind review process so we don't know the reviewer and the reviewer also they don't know who submit this article or manuscript so our uh, work really challenged by the uh, the the uh, the scholars in our field yeah by peer review so this is the the benefit of uh, submitting our thesis into uh, article yeah so uh, on the left one this one uh, is my first publication so this one in the Pacific Basin Finance Journal so when it published it is uh, ranked as Q1 and ABDC A. Yeah, ABDC A. ABDC is indexed by Australian Business Dean Council. So at the, at, the, at that time, I I uh, not using the I'm not using the Scopus index. So I didn't know about Scopus because when I did my PhD in New Zealand, my uni only consider the ABDC list. The ABDC list. So some question from the participants that I noticed uh, yesterday. So how to to know good journal? So from my experience, if the journal is listed in some index uh, journals, for example, uh, Scopus, then ABDC, then ICCI, then uh, we can consider the journal is good. Also, if some uh, big name published in that journal, so we also can consider good or the journal published by a well-known publisher, for example, Elsevier, Emerald, Sig, uh, Taylor Francis, uh, Willey. So we can also consider good, but it's not necessarily always good, yeah? So uh, on my life, uh, on your left, this one is uh, Q1 and A, and it took 13 months, 13 months for review process, only review process. For, do, uh, uh, for working on this paper, it took like uh, two years, yeah, one to two years. Uh, of course, it's the, the same time with my PhD. So it's not easy, it's not instant. And uh, when I did my PhD, it takes many times, uh, many comments from my supervisors. I had three supervisors at that time, yeah. Uh, three supervisor, one professor, uh, one associate, and one uh, senior lecturer. And they gave a lot of comments for my, for, for my thesis, then I convert to, the, to this uh, article. And the second one, this one is microfinance in Asia. So this one, a uh, book chapter, I wrote with my supervisor, Christopher Gunn. And uh, this one from my thesis as well. Yeah. So the third one, this one is Q2. But now the journal is Q1 right now. This one ABDC only C, yeah. So this one ABDC A, ABDC C, and this one also part of my uh, thesis as well. And this one uh, extended extended work from my thesis, from my PhD thesis. Actually, this one is done by my undergrad student. So my undergrad student, or we call it script C here in Indonesia, I convert into Q1 journal. So this one is Q1 journal only five pages. So uh, uh, the undergrad students already has a Q1 journal, yeah? But this one is not in finance area. Helion is a multi, multi-discipline area, but consider this one only script C or undergraduate project, uh, I think it's, it's quite uh, good. And then uh, I also have a pattern from Indonesia, yeah? 
for my models in the thesis. And all of my data in my PhD thesis, I can convert into one journal as well. The time I published this one is Q1, uh, data in brief. So all of my uh, thesis, we can convert into uh, publication, yeah? into journal or into book chapter or into uh, patent if we want. But the tips is uh, we need to uh, have a good thesis. So we need to have a good thesis or dissertation. And in our dissertation, it is clear our research objective or our research statement. Uh, we have to make sure it is clear and we have some uh, alternative of research objective to, to convert to the article or journal. And we, we need to map to mapping our thesis. Uh, in the beginning of our PhD or our master by research, we need to map our uh, thesis, which one we want to submit to the article, we want to submit to the book chapter or uh, as a data article or to patent. So this is uh, my uh, first slide. And the next, uh, this is the abstract of my article. The first one, this one, yeah. So the abstract from this one. So it is only 190 words, 190 words. So you can, uh, you can imagine that how we compress or reduce the words from our thesis into compact and uh, clear abstract. So this one extract from this abstract, extract from this abstract. So this abstract is uh, my PhD abstract, PhD thesis abstract. Uh, it is about uh, 278, 278 words. So I took some part of my PhD in, in this abstract. Yeah? So uh, research objective number one and research objective number two, I put uh, together to become one article. So this abstract is, uh, is quite clear. So what is the aim of our study? And then uh, I will discuss later about a crucial part in our manuscript. So in this abstract, uh, the, the summary is, I want to know the impact of financing from Islamic microfinance institution. Yeah? As mentioned by Mrs. Deity, uh, my background is, or my home base in Indonesia at the, Shari, uh, the Department of Shari Economic, uh, Faculty of Economic and Business. And I uh, focus on explore two group of financing in Islamic microfinance, equity, and debt-based financing. So I extract from uh, abstract format, yeah, abstract format of thesis to become a uh, format of manuscript. Okay, we continue. So what is actually crucial part of uh, our manuscript? Yesterday, I just reject one paper, one article, yeah, submitted to the Scopus Journal because it's not clear in the motivation and uh, a research gap, yeah, research gap. So the crucial part, 70% of uh, editor in chief, yeah, uh, editor in chief look at the motivation, yeah, motivation. Why we we uh, do the study? Why we choose the area, the topic, what is the background, what is the motivation. Yeah, so this is very important. So we can call it idea as well. So if our idea or motivation are well established, then it is uh, higher the chance for us to uh, get accepted in the journal, in the good journal. So we have to work for this one. So uh, when I did my PhD, yeah, um, I did my proposal, PhD proposal for nine months, for nine months. So uh, it took uh, plenty of time to uh, think about our motivation, about idea, about topic, why we choose the topics and how we, 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 we can get motivation, how we can get the ideas. Of course, the first thing we need to read, read a lot yeah, from the journal article, but make sure that we read from the good journal from the good journal, for, from the good rank of the journal. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not only focused or refer to the Scopus. Uh, in my PhD, yeah, in my uni, when I did my PhD, they, they follow the ABDC list, ABDC list. You can also check, yeah, ABDC list. 
So I only uh, follow article or read article that the index in ABDC list and consider A rank or B rank. So good journal. Then we can, uh, the, by the time we read the article, we will get the ideas. Uh, ideas, uh, what, uh, what is the research gap in the current literature? So how to find research gap? So sometimes the, the, the article put in the end of the article recommendation for further studies. Or we can also read from the article review journal. So article that the, the form is article review, usually they, they uh, collect many articles for the, uh, the research, for the study. Then we will know which area that hasn't covered by the uh, authors. So there is the research gap of the uh, study. So within, with the research gap, we will have a motivation to study, to study the specific area. So uh, when maybe uh, you right now still in the uh, studying uh, process, still doing PhD or doing master by research, it is a good time to think again, uh, what is the motivation for doing your PhD? What is the motivation for doing your PhD uh, research, the topic that you choose right now? So, because this one is very uh, important. So, uh, motivation in my uh, article, we can find from here. Yeah. So, this is the motivation. I want to know uh, or investigate the impact of Islamic microfinance. Yeah, Islamic microfinance, especially on rural household welfare. And what is the research gap? The research gap is uh, this one, yeah? Explore two groups of financing in Islamic, microfinance, equity, and debt test. So how I come up with this gap, because I, I read an uh, article that uh, up to now, only uh, normative, yeah? Or, or only uh, few, only few empirical study focus on this area. So I choose this, uh, this uh, topic, for my PhD. So this too is very important. So even you use the very complicated method or you use a, a huge or a large data set, yeah, still this one is important. Like I mentioned, the one that I reject yesterday, uh, the, the article studied more than 160 bank, yeah, more than 160 bank from five countries but the motivation is not clear and the research gap is, is not there and the study always uh, is, is common study. Yeah, it's not, it's, there is no uh, unique from the study. So I just reject uh, from the journal. And uh, we can also extend the unique of our manuscript through uh, make innovation, yeah? innovation in data set or method. Yeah? In data set right now, especially in the my area finance, uh, the 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 scholars or researchers from the overseas they use a, a soft sophisticated data set, yeah, or a complicated data set. For example, papers studying on uh, stock return, stock return, they use a, a data from uh, minutes by minutes. So not yearly anymore, not uh, not annually anymore or monthly, but uh, by minutes, yeah, the data. So we can imagine that uh, if we have to fight with the, that kind of database, it will be difficult, yeah. So in the overseas, they they uh, subscribe to to the good database, yeah, Bloomberg or uh, data stream or global financial database, but in Indonesia, only few uh, uni, only few uni subscribe to that database. So Indonesia is quite uh, good in uh, primary data. So if your study is primary data, uh, that will be uh, good uh, or unique. Uh, a good differentiation yeah, uh, from our manuscript to submit to the journal. But we have to make sure that the primary data is clear from the bias, yeah, clear from the bias and valid the technique we collect the data is robust. So this is important. So point number four is robustness test. 
robustness test is common now in the journal yeah, or in the article. So what is the robustness test? Robustness test meaning that our method or our result, yeah, our result uh, uh, valid, yeah, our result valid or robust, robust in the area. Yeah, for example, we put the control variable in order to check our result robust or not. Yeah, and then maybe we we uh, extend our method, yeah, to check the result robust or not. So this is important. Yeah. Especially for uh, secondary data, secondary data like study for uh, capital market or stock market, yeah. So uh, this this kind of robustness test is important. Usually they mention this one in the abstract, yeah, in the abstract. So uh, I just want to uh, highlight again. So the good journal, yeah, good journal. Usually they only expect abstract for. 100 to 250 words, no more than that. Yeah, so 100 to 100, 250, 100 to 250 words. Uh, like I mentioned, my abstract in the A journal or Q1 is only 119. It's also considered uh, too much. Yeah, right now I'm writing uh, articles only uh, less than 100 words, less than 100 words. The, the article, this article. This article uh, that uh, published by me and my students, undergrad students, only 89 words. Yeah, only 89 words, this one. But some abstract, they have a different formats, like this one, Emerald. We have to mention the purpose, methodology, findings, and originality or value of our study. So this one in Agricultural Finance Review. Yeah, Agricultural Finance Review. So, depends on the uh, journal. We have to follow the, the format of the journal. But usually, abstract, if uh, possible, we reduce to less than 100 words. Then, after the robustness test, another thing that we need to consider is implications. So, what is the implication of our study? Yeah, of course. Uh, our thesis, our uh, articles, our manuscripts need to uh, have contribution and implication. Implication uh, uh, to whom? Yeah? Implication to uh, regulators, implication to the industries, implication to the body of knowledge, yeah? to the knowledge, uh, current knowledge. So this is important. So we have, to, we have to mention the implication of our study based on our results. So, uh, like yesterday, uh, the article that, that I reject, I even haven't read the, uh, all the manuscripts. I only read the abstract, yeah? I only read the abstract and I am I, not interested with the article, so I reject. So usually editor-in-chief or reviewer, they don't read all of our manuscript. They only read some part of our manuscript because they receive so many articles, yeah? In, in a year, they can receive thousands of articles. And for a journal, the rejection rate is more than 90%. So meaning that out of 1,000 manuscripts, they have to reject 900, yeah? uh, more than 900 articles. So if we read the abstract and the reviewer or editor not interested with our abstract, they just suddenly reject yeah? our article. Then if they are interested yeah, with our abstract, they will continue to introduction. They will continue to the literature review, methodology, findings, yeah, and uh, conclusion or implication. Because abstract summarize all part of our manuscript from the aim of our manuscript, yeah, methodology, data, findings, robustness tests, implications. Yeah. We have to summarize all part of our manuscript into less than 100 words. So that is the difficult part to converting or turning our thesis into manuscript. So how many, how many words or how, how many pages uh, we, we, we wrote our thesis or dissertation? Probably 200, 300, 500, yeah? So how to compress that 500 pages only into 10 pages, yeah? I just want to back again to my uh, 
article. So this one only nine pages. This one only nine pages. This one is uh, around 14, 14 pages. This one five pages, only five. This one is four pages. Yeah. So how to uh, reduce the number of words to only become nine pages with 52 references. This one 52 references. Yeah. So I remember because I did by myself. Yeah. So I remember all of the details of my publication. Then uh, another point that is important is story of our manuscript. We have to focus on clarity. Yeah, how to communicate with uh, audience, how to communicate with the readers. In our thesis or dissertation, we only com communicate mainly with our supervisors. We have to uh, make sure that our supervisor satisfy with our writing. Yeah with our uh, thesis, so he will uh, proceed to the FIVA, for example, for uh, the SIDANG, yeah, for FIVA. But uh, in article or manuscript, our readers or audience is wider, yeah, uh, much wider than our thesis. So some of our readers or audience, probably they don't have any idea what is Islamic microfinance, what is Islamic finance, yeah or specific topic of our uh, thesis. So we have to make our story clear. We have to make our story clear. The problem with uh, Indonesian, or I notice, yeah, problem with uh, orang Indonesia, itu uh, we have flowers yeah, in our words. We put bunga-bunga, uh, yeah, banyak bunga-bunga in our words, but there is no point in our sentence. So we have to make sure uh, the clarity or of our manuscript, the clarity, the the quality of communication. Yeah, uh, we have to read uh, many times. Yeah, we have to read again our paragraph, our sentence many times. Not only write our paragraph once, then finish, then done. Yeah, we have to read from the article our previous study and write and read again and write again, read again and write again many times. Yeah. I just want to give you illustration when I did my PhD, when I did my PhD proposal, yeah, it took nine months. And when I sent my proposal, uh, part of my proposal, I received, yeah, I received for one pages more than 15 comments. So you can imagine I have 30 pages times 15, yeah, 15 comments from my supervisors. So uh, based on my experience, when I did my PhD, it's like coaching. So when we did our PhD, it's like it's like a coaching, yeah, coaching like uh, we are uh, kicking ball in the football. So the the time that we uh, we kick many many times the ball, we have the feeling, we have the instinct, yeah, uh, on how to uh, to uh, kick the ball uh, properly, yeah. So it's like the coaching clinic, yeah. When I, when we did our when when I did my PhD, so PhD not uh, rely only on intellectual, yeah. Intellectual is I can say number five or number seven. The main thing of our PhD is uh, our uh, survival, yeah, survival and sustainability to maintain the same. Uh, spirit to maintain the same uh, energy to do our uh, thesis or dissertation. So it's not only intellectual, but emotional as well. And our, uh, what do you call it? Yeah? Uh, our uh, survival yeah, to do the PhD. So the story of our manuscript must be clear from the beginning, yeah? especially in the abstract and introduction. So in abstract, uh, we need to be clear, not only to mention details, what software we use, what uh, what other study done. Yeah, So we only focus on our study. So this is the crucial part of our manuscript. And next one is essential question for writing articles. So what is the questions that we need to ask to ourselves after we finish writing our articles. So first is the originality, yeah? So originality of our articles. 
Then second one is relationship to literatures, whether we uh, cited a good uh, literature or not, whether we refer to the uh, current theory or previous study or not. Yeah. Then the methodology of our study, result and conclusion and implication for research practice and society. So this is very important because the aim, uh, the ultimate aim of our study is to have contributions, not only for Scopus, not only for journal, but what is the contribution to the society? So I will discuss one by one. So first is the originality. So does the paper contain new and significant information adequate to justify publication? So this is very important because as I mentioned, motiv motivation, ideas, research gap is very important. And we have to make sure that our paper original, yeah? our paper original, original meaning that uh, it is not like everyone haven't done it before, but original in, the, in, in our area. Yeah? For example, my first publication, yeah. So my paper, uh, first publication, uh, that's one only replicate as well, yeah. Replicate from previous study, but I put some original. What is the original originality? What is the originality? So I put it here. The originality is my study focused to explore two group of financing in Islamic microfinance, equity and debt test. So this is my. Uh, my uniqueness, yeah, my uniqueness, yeah. This is the originality of my study. So we have to uh, to raise key point or a highlight point of the originality of our study. So I, I just want to uh, share again. So this this paper actually my first experience submitting to international journal. Yeah, when I did my PhD, uh, that's one the time that I submit to international journal. Then I submit to the Q1 yeah, at, the, at the moment. I submit first time and submit to Q1 and I get accepted. Yeah? So one bullet, one uh, target yeah, at that time. Then after I come back from my PhD, then now working in the uni with the heavy teaching load and heavy work administration, yeah, uh, administration load, then it is difficult to get accepted. Yeah? So we need to... Uh, what do you call? We need to stay focused, yeah? Focus to work on our manuscript. Okay, so the originality is important. So is our paper contain new and significant information adequate to justify publication? So this is always the main thing that the editor and reviewers look at. So they want uh, originality because our uh, manuscript, our article is like a puzzle, puzzle in the uh, one one piece of puzzle to put in the current puzzle. Yeah. So our work is to support the previous studies in our area. Yeah. So this is uh, very important. The second one is relationship to the literature. So does the paper demonstrate and an adequate understanding of the relevant literature in the field and cite an appropriate range of literature sources. Yeah, so this is important. Uh, this is to know that we uh, study the previous uh, literature. Yeah, so we have to uh, cite it the appropriate literature for our study. For example, uh, uh, my study about Islamic microfinance. So I have to find journal or article that discuss the same thing, yeah? Islamic finance, Islamic microfinance. And this is also can give us insight or uh, uh, as a target of journal. Yeah? So for example, for my uh, study, I cited a lot from Pacific Basin Finance, then my target will be Pacific Basin. So this is uh, also uh, as a sign, the scope of the journal. If we cited a lot from Journal of Finance, Journal of Banking and Finance, so we can aim to submit to Journal of Finance as well. But Journal of Finance is very difficult. Yeah, Number one in the finance area and Journal of Banking and Finance as well. So uh, uh, make sure that we, we cite it from good journal, from good publisher, Elsevier, Emerald, yeah, Taylor Francis, SIG. Don't only cite it from thesis or from uh, dissertation, or from national journal, 
or from local journal. Make sure that we, we, we uh, refer to the good journal. Is any significant work ignored? So we have to uh, careful here because probably in the Islamic microfinance study, there is one literature or article cited by so many authors. Yeah, cited by so many authors. For example, in finance, pharma, and French, yeah, uh, the article cited by many authors. So we we can uh, we have to make sure that we include we include the the articles in our study yeah we include the article in our study it doesn't matter if we cite it from 1980 or 1990s but we support with the current empirical studies because that theory maybe we still use it until now yeah so it doesn't matter but we have a reason yeah we have argument why we still cite it from the uh, old literature yeah because we want to uh, follow the theory for example okay so the second one is relationship to the liter literature. So we need to first uh, start to collect a good journal, good article from a good journal. We need to read one by one yeah, the journal, uh, or we focus on some part of the journal. And we have to uh, careful with some significant work that probably we, we, we could ignore yeah, in our study. When I did my uh, PhD or my, or my first uh, manuscript, my article, I also borrow some uh, format or the way the, they write the journal, the article from the good journal. Yeah? So for example, I borrow how they write the abstract from different journal, different journal, different article, how they read the introduction from the different article, or how do they uh, organize the literature review from the different journal? So we can borrow. We can borrow. Uh, we can get inside how to write an abstract, how to write an introduction, how to write a literature review from the previous study. Next one is the methodology. Yeah, is the papers argument built on appropriate base of theory, concept, or other ideas? So this is important as. Uh, our theory or method have to revert to a previous study. Yeah? And what is the innovation for uh, our uh, study? Uh, like my study, I also uh, did the innovation in my method. Yeah? If we back to the abstract here. So my innovation, actually this one, double difference in difference yeah? approach. So previous study only consider the different in difference, but this time I use double because we have to assess for equity and debt-based financing. So that's one innovation in method. And has the research or equivalent intellectual work on which the paper is best been well designed? So we have to make sure that the data collection, the methodology, the definition of variables is uh, well designed yeah, and well explained in our, uh, in our paper. Are the methods employed appropriate? So we have to make sure we run the, the analysis, the estimation properly. Yeah? Uh, the undergrad thesis, yeah, the undergrad uh, project that I convert into Q1 journal, I rerun again. I rerun again the data. So the, the script C, yeah, script C or undergraduate thesis or project, I rerun again. And at the moment, one script C or one, undergrad, uh, one undergraduate studies project uh, still under review in Q2. Yeah? And uh, one, another one also published by Sinta, Sinta 2, yeah, Sinta 2. So we actually have so many possibility to turning thesis, not only from our thesis, but probably from our undergraduate students or postgraduate students. We work together with them and we had the experience how to publish in the good journal. We just need to, uh, to switch, yeah, to switch the format of the project paper, the format of the thesis into the format of the journal. Then next is the results and conclusions. Are result presented clearly and analyzed appropriately. So this is also important because I notice some of the authors, some of manuscripts only present the, the numbers or the figures. They don't really analyze, yeah? They don't really discuss the results. So some articles, uh, 
uh, they don't put literature review, yeah? only introduction, methodology, and results, because they want to discuss more about the result. Do the conclusion adequate, adequately tied together the other elements of the paper? So we have to make sure that the conclusion conclusion is revert, re, revert to the, to the uh, results. Yeah? The problem for uh, our lecturer in Indonesia, sometimes we discuss in conclusion that not revert to result. Yeah, our result is different. Then our conclusion is also different. So uh, this is very important to tie together the other element of our paper in our conclusion. Another problem that I notice with our lecturer in Indonesia, sometimes in introduction we are really uh, arrogant. Yeah, we state that this is the first study studying blah 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 blah. And when the reviewer and editors look at the result or the main manuscript, we couldn't find this is new. Yeah? Nothing new about this study, but we put a strong statement. Yeah? I usually say strong statement that this study is the first study in the world, sometimes like that. Yeah? But our sample is only in East Java maybe, or only in Jakarta. That is very, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah? Will directly uh, reject our paper, the editor in chief or the reviewer. So try to avoid the strong statement. Try to avoid the strong uh, argument yeah, in our manuscript or our article. Uh, stay humble. Stay humble when writing our manuscript article. Then if we can surprise the editor in chief or reviewers with a good methodology, with a good result, with a good paper, the story of our writing that it will be ex uh, it will be beyond uh, their expectation, yeah, beyond the expectation of the editor in chief and the uh, reviewers. Okay, the final part of essential question for our manuscript is the implication for research practice or society. Does the paper bridge the gap between theory and practice? As I mentioned. Our manuscript or article is like puzzle, yeah. It's like puzzle, one piece of puzzle. How this puzzle bridge the gap in the theory or practice, yeah. So which gap that we fill with our study? How can the research be used in practice, economic and commercial impact in teaching to influence public policy in research? Yeah, we have to ask these questions to ourselves yeah, after we finish writing our article or before we write our article. Yeah? So how this study will benefit the society, how this study will benefit the, the, the uh, regulators, the governments, yeah? the poor people in my st study, for example. So we have to ask this question in our study. What is the impact upon society influencing public attitudes, affecting quality of life, we have to highlight this one in our conclusion, highlight this one in our uh, uh, results. So how this study may change the, or influence the attitudes of people. Yeah? For example, uh, in my field, behavioral finance, yeah? or we can study about COVID-19, yeah? uh, the popular topic right now. So how our study, study <coughs> may, uh, sorry, impact the society. So are these implications consistent with the findings and conclusion of the paper? So the implication must be consistent, yeah? consistent with the findings and conclusions. Uh, the area that we only investigate in our study, the, the one that we must highlight. Yeah? So as I mentioned, we couldn't highlight other area that we not investigate in our study. Yeah? So this is the crucial, part, uh, the essential question that we need to ask to ourselves, yeah, the five, five essential questions. So you have to re we have to remember these five uh, questions before we write our manuscript. Okay, next is what is the tips to turn our thesis or dissertation into manuscript? Yeah. Like I mentioned, probably we have 200 pages, 300 pages, 500 pages of thesis and how to reduce, how to turn into a manuscript or article. Yeah? First is we have to map our thesis. We have to map our thesis. Yeah? Which one to submit to Q1, 
which one submit to Q2, which one submit as a book chapter, which, which one submit to the uh, uh, patent probably. So we have to map our thesis. Yeah. So uh, we, have, we, we need to well prepare. Yeah. We need to well prepare before we start our PSD. Uh, and we need to read a lot in order to inspire, get inspired from the previous study. Second one is adjust to international journal standards. Yeah, uh, we, we need to uh, read the scope and aims of the journal that we target to. And we need to read the, the, the procedures, yeah? the information for authors for journal that we target to. Yeah? But from my experience, first time I submit to international journal, the Q1 journal, I didn't read anything from the journal because I have river a lot from the Pacific Basin as well. So when I submit to Pacific Basin, uh, unintentionally uh, or uh, it's automatically, yeah, my format and everything is similar to the Pacific Basin. Yeah? So we need to uh, refer to many articles from the journal that we target to. Yeah? Uh, so at the beginning, we need to, to, to write list of target journal. Usually, I list around three to five target journal from for one topic of research. Yeah. Then the uh, uh, third point is highlight motivation, novelty, and innovation. If our thesis or dissertation still lack of motivation, novelty, and innovation, we need to highlight again. We need to uh, highlight the motivation, novelty in abstract, in introduction. Yeah. Add literature from reputable journals. Yeah, if, for example, at the moment you you have done your thesis, then you forgot to uh, add many literature from a good journal. So before you turn to manuscript, please revert to the good journal or reputable journal. As I mentioned, the reputable journal could be the index, could be the rank, could be the publisher, could be the author that usually submit to the journals. For example, in finance, uh, we know the big name in finance. Then if the big name uh, submit to that journal, it must be good, yeah, uh, the journal. Focus on clarity of our manuscript. We need to rewrite, rewrite again, yeah. So uh, some authors, it took like a day to only write one paragraph, sometimes more than that, yeah. So it's not common in our uh, culture to reread re re again, yeah? re rewrite again, reread again our uh, paragraphs. So we need to uh, start to read again our writing, start to rewrite. Yeah? So probably the paragraph is not clear, the flow is not good, so we need to check again. Verify the data and process. We have to make sure that the process, the data, the regression, the estimation is good and valid. And if possible, we provide the robustness test. Robustness test could be extended of method or control variables or situation. Maybe we include the monetary crisis yeah, or COVID crisis as a robustness uh, test and provide implications and contributions. So this is very important as well. So some authors, they, they write a conclusion for one whole uh, pages, yeah, one whole page or uh, two pages. Yeah. So uh, sometimes we only write a very short, very short conclusion, but this conclusion actually is very important. Yeah. So we can include implication and contribution in our conclusion then refer uh, again to our research question. In my PhD thesis, I had uh, four research question. Yeah? The impact of financing, the impact of the two specific financing, then the Sharia compliance, then accessibility. So we can refer to our research question in our thesis in order to produce an article or manuscript. So we divide the research objective or research question one research objection may be for one Q1, two research objective may be for uh, one Q1 as well, top tier, for example, and one research objective for one uh, Q3 maybe. Yeah. Then summarize and police. We read again the whole manuscript. We read again the whole article. 
we make sure that the flow is uh, good, the clarity is good, then we can send to the proofread. Yeah, I also send my paper to the proofreaders. Uh, fortunately, in New Zealand, uh, in my uni, they provide the proofreader. Yeah, so they the, the the uni they have list of proofreader. Then we submit to the proofreader. But uh, the things to remember is the proofreaders will not change significantly of our manuscript. So we cannot rely only on them. We have to make sure that we are already write in English in the good English. Then they just want to uh, polish. Yeah, polish or finalize our uh, manuscript. You also, you also can submit your manuscript to the proof uh, or proofreader service, yeah? S provide by the Elsevier or provide by Enago, yeah? Uh, I noticed the price is around 500 US, 400 US dollars for uh, 7,000, 8,000 uh, words of manuscript. Make sure the writing flow is interesting and good. Yeah, uh, we have to make sure that our manuscript, the seven thousand words, five thousand words, or nine thousand words, in the good flow. Yeah, in the good flow and interesting and good. We have to make sure in introduction there is one point that interesting in literature review as well in methodology in results. So the reviewers, the editor in chief, always get interested. Yeah, when reading our article okay so after we finish writing articles after we finish turning our articles into manuscript or into article yeah the other or next process is review yeah review process so this is different thing yeah writing manuscript is one thing uh, review process is one thing so if we submit to the journal, there is three, uh, there is, uh, three possibility. Yeah? So first one is desk rejection, uh, meaning that the editor in chief directly reject our uh, manuscript or paper. Second one is revise and resubmit. So we have a chance to resubmit or revise our paper. The third one is uh, accepted, yeah? but this is very rare. Yeah? This is very rare. So usually the second one is very common. So the editor in chief or reviewer uh, will give comments and input for us in order to revise. So first thing is to respond well. Yeah. So uh, respond well all the reviewers input or comments. Sometimes the first time when we submit, like my my personal experience, when the first time I submitted to the international journal Q1. Then I receive three pages of comments. Yeah, three pages of comments from two reviewers. I feel disappointed. Yeah, or feel uh, unsecure, or feel something not comfortable. Yeah. So we have to uh, know that the response or the comment is is normal. It's normal in academics. So no need to sad. No need to angry. Yeah, it's okay for angry or sad for one hour, one day, but. Uh, we have to move on. Yeah, we have to uh, respond the comments. We have to respond the comments. So sometimes the comments is a harsh comments. Yeah, sometimes it's very uh, rude the comments. Yeah, your article is not suitable for our journal. Yeah, your English is bad. Yeah, blah blah blah. So we have to uh, respond to that comments. Di Indonesia jangan baper lah. Ya, istilahnya tidak perlu baper kalau kita terima comments. Ya. Kita uh, no need to uh, apa ya, put it in our heart. Yeah? So see from the reviewer's perspective, the second one. As I mentioned, the reviewers uh, receive so many articles in a year, thousands of articles, the editor in chief, I mean. Yeah? And reviewers in a year maybe could receive a, a couple of articles to review. So sometimes they are in the bad mood. Yeah? Sometimes they are not in the good condition. Sometimes they are tired. So we have to know the, the emotion of a reviewer as well. Yeah, put ourselves in the reviewer's perspective. Yeah, like yesterday, I only read the abstract, then I reject because I'm not in the good mood to read all the paper. Right. So it depends on the mood of the reviewers. Answer the reviewer's comment truthfully. So we have to answer in details uh, what change that we make in which page, in which uh, paragraph, we have to, to clearly mention in our uh, revised document. Yeah? We, we call it rejoinder document. 
then make a rebuttal comments if necessary. Uh, so if uh, if we we think that the comment is not correct, the comment is not uh, valid from the reviewer. The reviewer doesn't really know the the the, the paper. We can make uh, rebuttal comments. We can make arguments, uh, but please uh, do it politely. Yeah, no, no need to root yeah to the to the reviewers because they are the one that will accept our uh, manuscript. Then take your time. No need to rush. Yeah, uh, you can leave it for two months. Yeah, uh, for uh, for creating a reviewer documents. Yeah, uh, usually the good journal. They will give three months or four months for uh, review for uh, authors to respond the reviewers' comments. Then things to avoid in the uh, review process: start a debate with the reviewers. No need to to do this. Blame reviewers or editors. Uh, for example, we tell them that you are wrong. You are not read all of my manuscript. Blah blah blah. So uh, put in the position uh, when we do this one with our supervisor yeah it's not polite to tell our supervisor or our uh, panel uh, judge in our viva that they are wrong or they are uh, mis uh, they are not a good reviewer yeah so be polite with them document response or rejoinder are not professional so this not this one is common so sometimes the authors they don't know how to respond they don't know how to respond with the reviewers comments how to answer the reviewer comments yeah not responding to all input and suggestion from the reviewer sometimes we receive uh, difficult questions then we try to skip from that question so that's also not appropriate yeah we need to answer all the question yeah my paper uh, the 13 months review process it took three rounds yeah three rounds for review uh, revise and resubmit and when i skip the difficult question the reviewers always come back. You skip this question. Why you skip this question? Blah blah blah. I'm not, I'm not uh, satisfied with your answer. Please, uh, please, uh, please uh, refer to my first comment. So we have to make sure that they, uh, we have to make sure that we respond all the question in a good way. Yeah. I think that's all from me. I think I have uh, managed to uh, use my 45 minutes. Hopefully, yeah. Then uh, thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I uh, return to Mrs. Deti. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Bayu, for your valuable knowledge. Let me take some keynotes from the sessions. At the beginning of our study, we have to make our tests so that we could submit it to some targeted journals. And the crucial part in converting the tests into journal article is the motivation, research gap, innovation in our research related to topic, data set, method, robustness test, implication for the industry and body of knowledge, and story of our manuscripts. The story of our manuscripts means that we have to make sure the clarity and the quality of communication. Try to avoid the strong argument statement in our articles, such as it is the first study. And Dr. Bayou also shared his experience when he took his PhD in Lincoln University New Zealand, the interesting point for taking PhD is not really, uh, it's not rely on intellectual, but to maintain the same spirit and energy to finish our dissertations. Thank you so much, Dr. Bayou. Our second discussion is about how the article can be published and acceptable in the Scopus Journal from the perspective of editorial board in Scopus Journal and what could be the strategy to increase the citation. Dr. Abu, over to you. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, thank you, Ms. Chairperson. Um, thank you for inviting me, for having me today. And um, I think my job is uh, much uh, easier now after uh, Dr. Bayu um, has done quite a tremendous job. Um, he did explain very well that was what, as editors, that was what we really expecting from um, the author. Okay, so to begin um, my, my, my talk today, I would like to first um, explain to you guys about um, publication. Okay, so 
as mentioned by uh, Dr. Bayu just now, um, actually every institution has its own uh, set of standard. Okay, so I agree with him um, because uh, Dr. Bayu did his PhD uh, at New in New Zealand. So New Zealand and Australia, they used ABDC uh, ranking. Okay, and I was doing my PhD in France and we have another set of, of ranking. So um, we call it as uh, CRNS ranking. Okay, uh, but in Malaysia, when I come back after my PhD, um, we have another set of um, quality or ranking standard. Okay, so uh, let me just first uh, share to you uh, what is the difference. Okay, and why it is important is simply because uh, we admit that um, maybe some of the participants today are academician, um, meaning they are lecturers in university. So do I. So am I. Um, some of you are graduate students. And uh, most of the time, um, postgraduate students wish to become academician later on. Um, they will apply for an academic position in universities, right? So again, you cannot run away from the fact that applying for a position in universities now is very competitive. And I would say that 80 to 90% of the um, requirement to be accepted is your publication record. Okay, so again, how would you, um, as Dr. Bayu mentioned earlier, uh, many of the questions asked like how to determine good journals or not, okay? So in order to answer that, you need to decide or you need to look into what does uh, the institution, uh, your institution uh, rank or classify or define quality journals, okay? So I mentioned, um, I would just share um, something. Okay, um, I hope everyone can see the, the... Yes, we can see the slides. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so I, as I mentioned in Australia and New Zealand, they do have ABDC ranking, okay. So you can see um, a list of journals included in the ranking, okay? But of course, in Malaysia, we don't care about this, okay? And I, I'm sure you, most of you are from Indonesia, also don't care about this ranking, right? Because this is not how uh, quality is defined in your country, okay? So even in Malaysia, we don't use this ranking, okay? And as I mentioned, when I was in France, we do have, we do have, um, CNRS uh, ranking journal. Okay, so this is the ranking used in France. Okay, so in Malaysia, we don't use any of this ranking, but we just may we, we do a simpler definitions of quality journals. So what we use is we first quali qualified good journals is journals included in this database, which is Web of Science database. And I'm sure Dr. Bayu familiar with this. Okay, whereby um, okay, so this is list of articles that uh, in Malaysia considered as good journals. Okay, so we do have, I think, six. Um, okay, so we have like twelve over thousand journals indexed by Web of Science. Okay. So in Malaysia, this is what we consider as quality journals. Okay, some of the journals are also indexed by Scopus, but some are not. Okay, so now, this is not the concern, or if I'm not mistaken, because uh, I guess this is my second talk talking about um, journal publication. Um, uh, I had um, another discussion last month with um, Universitas Sebelas uh, Maret. Okay, and. I mean, they, they asked me quite a similar um, question on the how to define quality journals, okay? And if I'm not mistaken, in Indonesia, um, you use or you consider all journals indexed by Scopus as uh, quality journals, right? I mean, for especially for those, for students who, if they wanted to graduate, 
they need to publish in any of the journals, right? Uh, indexed by Scopus. Okay, so for you, for those who are not familiar how to get the the list, you can just Google Scopus, and then you can download uh, the source. Okay, so I've done my part. Okay, so if you can see here, um, they are actually. Sorry, take some time. Um, okay, so I have downloaded uh, the list of journals indexed by Scopus. So you have over 40,000 journals indexed by Scopus under different categories or different study areas, okay? But of course, um, as I said, we have different um, standard, okay? Like in ABDC ranking and SR CNRS ranking in France, they only consider journals in business and economics or finance or related areas only. What does it mean is that you cannot publish in general outside of this, outside of that study area. So you cannot publish in general of agriculture, for example, or general of, I don't know, um, animal or general of history or etc. They don't recognize that because those journals are not included in ABDC ranking. Okay, but in university uh, in Malaysia, they don't mind. As I mentioned earlier, that um, as long as your journal is indexed by Dr. Abu. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah. as long as long as your journal is indexed by Web of Science. So as I mentioned, we have like uh, twelve thousands um, over journals. So they, they they consider that as quality journals. Okay. So that is the different rules of game. Okay, maksudnya. In different countries, they have different rule of game. Okay, in Malaysia, they don't care. If you, let's say, my area is international entrepreneurship and business, even if I, I publish in journals of computer language, obviously this is not in business area, but they, they still consider that as quality journal because it is indexed by Web of Science. Okay, so uh, that is the rule or the um, rule of game in Malaysia. Okay, sometimes I admit that it's not easy to get into business area journals. Okay, um, I'm sure uh, Dr. Bayu aware on that. Sometimes we try to find a niche area. For example, um, I had a um, few articles about entrepreneurship education. Okay, so I don't send that article to journals of, of business research or top journals in business area, but I try to find or try to attract the attention among scholars in education area or in education field. So I submitted that general uh, that articles to general of education, for example, or general of educational studies, or you know general of international education, for example. So obviously those journals are not ranked in ABDC ranking because they are not fall under business field, but they are fall under education field. But in Malaysia, as I said, we recognize that as quality journals. Okay, so my first very important point is that you need to know the rules of game in your country. Okay, because some of you are in I heard in, in Pakistan or in in I don't know some of you are in no other other than Malaysia and Indonesia. So you need to get to know how to define good journals according to the standard or definitions of your institution or or country. Okay. So uh, let's just focus to Scopus Journal because as I said, this is the, uh, the uh, rule of game in Indonesia whereby um, um, lecturers as well as postgraduate students, you need to publish your articles in um, any uh, journal indexed by, by Scopus. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm not sure if... Um,
I'm not sure if in Indonesia, okay, as I mentioned, you have um, 40 over 1000 journals indexed by Scopus here, okay. I'm not sure if you publish in journal outside the business area, does it consider as, um, I don't know, as um, requirement, uh, does it fulfill the requirement to graduate for PhD student or not? Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe, uh, can you quickly answer for me, Deti or uh, Prof. Uh, Darento or Dr. Bayu? Yeah, uh, some uni so, they. I think it all yeah, only Scopus, only Scopus index. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the study area. Yeah, regardless of the queue or the rank. Yes. Uh, and regardless of the 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 area of the of the journal, like for example, if they publish in journal of education, does it consider? As... Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, good. But okay, for so... us to 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 apply for professor, mm -hmm. we need to focus on our area and in reputable, meaning that Q three and above. Q1, okay. Q2, Q3. Okay. Okay. So that is the rule of game in Indonesia. Okay. Meaning that for students, okay, some of the participants are students, you can publish and you can choose out of 40,000 um, journals indexed by Scopus. So don't tell me and that don't tell your supervisors or anyone that it's hard to get into any of these journals. You know, you got for 40,000 over journals to choose from. Okay. So of course, if you download this Excel file, you can uh, play around with the list. For example, you can just get rid of inactive journals as well as you can get rid of discontinued journals. Okay. And then maybe you just want to focus um, on certain area. So most of you are under business and management area. So you can just choose journals under this category. So you just click or choose business management and accounting category so that you have more specific uh, journals to choose from, okay? But as I said, um, this is, um, as I said, in, in Malaysia, it doesn't matter, right? Because um, sometimes we try to attract attention among um, odd audience, like for example, it's among education um, scholars, they barely talk about education, uh, entrepreneurship education. So me, I'm doing um, my, my research area in international um, entrepreneurship. Maybe I try to attract attention. Okay, you try to find niche. Okay, but um, as Dr. Bayu said, uh, maybe yes, that's enough for you to graduate, but maybe it's not strong enough for you to apply for professorship. Okay, but in Malaysia, you can still use that to apply for professorship as long as the journal uh, or the article title fit your study area, okay? So even if that paper is submitted to Journal of Education, but that paper is about entrepreneurship education, for instance. So the panel will know that, oh yes, this paper is submitted to Journal of Education, but this is about entrepreneurship education, which is fit my research background or research area in entrepreneurship, okay? So that's the first, um, the first thing that I would like to emphasize um, in my, my talk here. First, know your rule of game or uh, how to define good journals, okay? So, uh, so we go back to the, um, okay, so um, why I try to demonstrate here is that because uh, many of, students especially in Indonesia as I said when I had um, my workshop with um, students in Universitas uh, Sebelas Mare they don't know how to find a journal how to you know how to know which journal is good or not okay so you have another website a website which is this um, Simago okay you can quickly or easily google this okay and you can get all the information about the journal from here Okay, let's say um, Dr. Bayu mentioned that you just want um, to publish in Q1 or Q2 or Q3 journals um, indexed by Scopus. Okay, so you can just quickly, let's say, write the name of the journal. So this is my journal. Um, I mean, I'm the, one of the editor here. Okay, so 
from the information pop up, you can easily trace that this journal is ranked Q3. Okay, so this is how you want to check the Q or quartile of or the ranking of the journal. Okay, and I'm sure um, this is where, um, sorry, this is where Dr. Um, Bayou had published. So Pacific Basin is obviously Q1 if I'm mistaken or Q2, okay? So you can use this technique in order to check the quartile or, uh, of the journal, okay? So this is to check one by one, but if you want to download the full list, but only in, let's say Q, you can use um, this method, okay? So you can either for example go to the uh, scopus website just now and then you go to source and maybe you just want to choose um, c on the left side okay maybe you can just choose q1 or q2 okay and you just want journal to be here Okay, then you can apply. Okay, so there are 13,000 over journals under all categories. So of course, what you can do is you can download all the lists and then you can sort by the study area. Okay, you can just get rid of um, other unrelated areas like um, natural science, physics, chemistry, or etc. Okay, so this is one way to check or to validate uh, the quartile of the journal. Okay, and the second thing is that um, maybe some of you, uh, especially students, they are, um, um, I would say, desperate to um, to graduate on time. So you want to to get your paper published on time or before your graduate. Okay, so that once you are ready for Viva, you have publication in hand. So, you know, you can viva and at the same time fulfill the re uh, publication requirements. So, what you can do is this is the document from 2016 to 2019. Okay. So, if you sort it, okay, you can see that there are some journals like Scientific Report, Plus One and some other journals publish a lot of article over this period of time, okay? So what I'm trying to say here is that we believe or we assume, we assume that if we send our paper to these journals, probably we have more chance to get accepted simply because they publish a lot of articles every year, okay? As compared to for example, this journal, okay, um, this is almost impossible to see that, um, let's say, Foundation and Trends in Database, they only publish six articles, uh, I assume because they are newly added in Scopus Database, but anyhow, it shows that they don't publish a lot of articles every year. Okay, they have limited issues numbers or volume numbers. So, this is my humble advice, especially for students who are desperate to get your paper published on time or as soon as possible. Maybe this is an uh, informal tactic. Okay, This is not something that people talk in public because this is not a very scholar, um, scholarly strategy. You know, This is just a, I don't know, um, shortcut, shortcut strategy or short-term um, strategy where you can use. As I said, try to go into journal that publish a lot of articles every year because you have more chance to get accepted. Um, even in Malaysia, a lot of people are submitting their papers to sustainability journal. Okay. Um, let me just check sustainability.
So sustainability is rank um, Q2. Okay, it publish articles, any articles related to a green technology or green business or green entrepreneurship or whatever related to environment, etc. And as I mentioned, it publish a lot of articles every year. Even in Malaysia, many um, even lecturers are submitting their papers to sustainability. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I think this is not a good journal that can um, improve your visibility or improve your credibility as a researcher. Let's say if you're applying for professorship, but this is just enough for you uh, to, to, to graduate as a PhD student. Okay? So this is uh, another technique what you can use. Okay, so um, I guess that's enough for um, for understanding what uh, what is the list of journals indexed by Scopus and how to how to determine the quartile one, two, or three of the journals. Okay, that is how you want to check that. Okay, so um, uh, going back to uh, the task or the job as an editor. So I follow up what has been discussed by um, Dr. Bayu just now. So um, we need to acknowledge that, um, okay, so I don't touch about how to convert thesis into um, article uh, for submission to a journal simply because when I did my PhD in France, we, I did my PhD in article type. It's like, it's very common in economics field whereby you publish three um, general articles and you compile that to become your thesis. So we don't have, I don't have a thick thesis like 200 or 300 pages. No, I just have three simple, not three simple, but three articles submitted to a journal and then you compile that, you make some introduction to tally or to integrate to show how these three articles fit under a similar theme and then you make some conclusion to uh, summarize everything what you have done. So I'm not the right person to talk about how to convert and I'm sure that has been um, covered by Dr. Bayou just now. So what I'm trying to tell you um, is that this is the, um, the job as an editor. So Dr. Bayou was right, okay? Um, writing a paper is actually, um, is, um, is a job or it, it is an art of writing, you know? It's not about the contents of the paper that we look in the first place when we see the manuscript, okay? So you can argue that, uh, well, my research is very novel, it's very new, nobody has done this before, etc. But we as an editor, we don't care about that. We just care about how you present your paper. Okay, so this is art of writing. Um, I'm very sorry, and I'm very sorry, I'm sorry to myself too. I am not a native speaker, okay? So kita, orang Malaysia dan orang Indonesia. So, none of us are, uh, are English native speaker, right? So yes, on one hand, we can argue that yes, we, we are at deficit position. Kita ada kerugian because we are not native speaker, but it's not an excuse, you know, like we are competing at international level. We need to have a adequate or I would say adequate level or, or standard level of English proficiency. That is something that you need to learn over time, okay? So you might not get everything during your PhD journey, but at least once you enter uh, the career field or career journey, you should have, as I said, um, adequate English proficiency, okay? So writing a paper for journal submission is an art, you know, it's a skill that you need to acquire. Nobody born with a skill to write a paper, but this is what you need to learn. And as Dr. Bayu said, this is what you need to acquire or learn, especially during your PhD journey. Because once you graduated, there's no more time for you to learn how to write a paper. Because once you become a lecturer, even in the first year of your career, you, um, oh, I should just stop the video first. Oh no, it's okay. So um, once you start becoming a lecturer later on, um, Sorry. So once you become a lecturer, even in the first year, you are required to publish. So no more time for you to learn how to write. Okay. So this is art of, uh, of writing. Okay. That you need to learn. Okay. 
um, it's just a selling a product. Okay, let's say you argue that, oh, I have a very wonderful product. Um, I believe that this product is beneficial for everybody. Okay, but you just don't know how to sell this product. You know, you don't have a good word to convey your message. You just not, don't know how to, you know, present um, in a very good way how to sell this product, then I would say nobody will buy your product. Okay, so same goes to um, writing a paper. So if even if you think that you have a very good content in your research, but if you don't know how to deliver that, you don't know how to put in words, then I'm sorry that this is the game in academic. You need to have a good skill in writing a paper. Okay. So uh, yes, um, first, as I said, um, following uh, what Dr. Bayu said, as an editor, when we accept the paper, when we receive the submission, definitely we will do the editorial checking. Okay, so editorial checking is the responsibility of, of me, for example. So I will quickly see the paper, the quality of the paper. And the very second I look into the paper, I know whether to reject or send the paper for review process, okay? So let me just demonstrate. Um, I guess it's fair to make a um, forehand uh, upfront disclaimer that I use this paper just to demonstrate to you because this paper has been submitted to me during the workshop with Universitas Sebelas Maret. Okay, so I just use this paper to demonstrate on the common mistakes what authors done and I'm sorry to say that most, uh, this is a very common mistake, especially from Indonesia, okay? Because we, in general, Pengurusan, we receive a lot of papers from Indonesia. And I can see that um, 80 or 90% of submissions post these kinds of mistakes or um, weaknesses, okay? Um, okay. Okay, um, so again, my discussion here is very much related with what Dr. Bayu has, um, has talked just now. Okay, so first of all, um, okay, first of all, first, this is a very basic, you know, when I receive a paper, um, for example, let's say, let's just imagine this is a submission that I receive, okay? I will quickly look into the paper and see that I know that I will reject this paper because it's not very presentable because sometimes you use, uh, definitely it does not follow the format of the journal. That is a severe problem, okay? You need to respect the journal yet that you're submitting to, respect the format, you need to follow that, okay? And then you can see here that um, it's not presentable in a way that it uses a small uh, font size. It should be larger, okay? So as I said, this is a minor things, but this is the first thing that we editors look into when we receive submission, you know? At the first glance, we know that we will reject this paper, okay? Try to use or try to follow the format of uh, the journal, okay? So let me just give you a um, quick quick common mistake made by, by authors, I would say. Um, okay, so first of all, as I said, I want to emphasize that um, Dr. Bayu was right, okay? There's a lot of essential questions that you need to ask before you submitting to a journal, but I would say the, the most two important things uh, deserve re-highlighting is first is originality, and second is relationship to literature. So I use the same wording uh, by Dr. Bayu just now. Okay, the first is about originality, okay? So how to rectify or how to acquire, how to, go, how to get a good originality and say relationship to literacy is, yes, as Dr. Bayu said, is to get into the um, latest articles published in top journals, okay? So uh, this is my my, my, my personal practice, okay? So I used to browse to, let's say, um, journal of 
business venturing. Okay, this is top channels in my area. Okay, so uh, what I normally you do is to go to the journal and then I will view articles. Okay, so this is very important, especially for students. You know, uh, for PhD student, um, they often start in the very first or early stage of their PhD journey when the supervisor asks them to prepare a, a proposal. They don't know where to start because even me myself, um, my master's level was uh, uh, um, a coursework, coursework mode, meaning that I have no research background at all. I just attended courses in order to get masters. And now, once you step in into PhD program, you are required to do research, right? Like what is research? You have no idea at all. So this is a very good start for you to first go to top journals in your area and go to the latest it's either article in press okay so article in press simply means that this article these articles are accepted but they are not yet assigned with issue numbers so you just go through one by one okay so in general of business venturing under article in press i can say you have Quite numbers of them okay you just go one by one not necessarily click on the article but read the title any of the title must attract your attention you must have some interest in any of the topic right for example let's say i don't know maybe uh oh you want you are interested in entrepreneur entrepreneurial failure for example we always, we often talk about entrepreneurial success, but maybe few of us are talking about failure, right? So maybe this is a good start. Okay, so you just click here in this paper and try to look what the paper is all about and try to expand from this. Okay, so by doing so, you have few advantages and most importantly is because you are updated with the most recent literature about this. So you're not losing focus, right? You're like, you don't know where to start. So that's a problem. Okay, when um, I think uh, it's very common, even in my university and me as a supervisor, when let's say I have a new uh, potential student coming to me, um, PhD candidate asking like, oh, they wanted to do a PhD with me. And I asked them to, can you, uh, suggest or come up with any good proposal and they will start like what is proposal or what topic to focus on etc right because as i said most of us we don't have research background prior to phd program right most of our master's level um are in a coursework mode like we have no background in research okay so when i ask student or potential student to come up with proposal Many of the, oh, I would say almost 90% of the proposals are useless. They are not based on the theoretical or knowledge base. Okay. M many of them are based on their observation. Like, um, for example, um, maybe one of them, oh, I want to study about COVID-19, you know, because this is a hot topic now. But yeah, COVID-19, so what? Oh, I want to see what is the impact on um poor poor people in rural area for example i said okay fine and what is your research pro research problem what is the gap what is the theory involved etc and they could not answer okay so i don't blame them 100 percent. but what i'm trying to say is that you need to have basic a strong foundation that allow you to expand from okay so how to find that as i said is just go to top journal and browse through the most recent published articles in that journal. From that, you can expand. And you don't lose any important literature, like Dr. Bayou mentioned, that uh, this literature should be in any um, paper or in any study about entrepreneur entrepreneurial failure, for example. So you don't lose them, okay? You don't, okay? Because you keep uh, up, to, uh, up to date with the most recent article in that area. Okay, so that is where you should focus or that is where that should be your starting point. Okay. Now, um, if you go back to the... Okay. 
So this is a standard um, article submitted to me, um, even in general pengurusan. Okay. So from the title, you need to talk about the general team or the team in in knowledge. You know, like um, Dr. Bayu just now. Um, what was your title just now, Dr. Bayu? Uh, equity financing and debt risk financing. See. Okay, so equity financing and debt financing. So, I'm um, sorry. Okay, so we know as a reader, once we read the title, we know that this paper is about equity financing and debt financing. Okay. But if we look, this is very common, I would say. Okay. From this title, um, it is not very clear uh, what is the, the theme of the paper okay so this is about innovation and leadership and for firm performance okay the most common mistake here is that you often put a very specific context in your title okay so th this is javanese leadership okay i give you another example i receive another paper so this is wayang kulit performance for example, okay, so this is a specific context to exemplify a more general research team. So I would say general wayang kulit performance is actually a creative industry, for example. Okay, so they should not post wayang kulit performance here, rather they should post creative industry. Okay, so for example, okay, let's say let's just briefly refine the title okay so this is the role of innovation in mediating the effect of leadership style on the performance of medium size and micro enterprises okay so we or authors should refine the title to be more academic or to fit with the theme of research okay so the most suitable title for me as an editor should be something like um, so this is about the mediating effect of leadership right okay so it's about um, the effect of innovation on medium uh, we normally use this term sm is performance does leadership style matter okay so i'm not i'm not saying this is the best um that this is the best title but this is more sound title you know that we know that okay this is about the effect of innovation and performance and we want to look into the mediating effect of leadership or the intervention of leadership style okay you should not involve the most specific thing like Javanese leadership because obviously if I'm someone from the US or France or Brazil, I don't care about Japanese. I don't know what is Japanese, Javanese, right? Java. Nobody care about Java. Okay. So we don't want to tell the reader at the very beginning that this is study about Java. Otherwise, people would think that, so why should people care about Java? Okay. So Java is actually just a context of your study in order to delineate delineate about this issue okay so we are trying to solve the issue of the mediating effect of innovation on performance and how to solve this problem how to solve this question is by using javanese javanese uh, specific context okay so try not to uh, invoke or tell reader a very specific things that they don't know okay so same goes here, as you can see here, uh, developments of creative industry on, okay, so an overview. So this is quite lengthy and in informative, uninformative, okay, it should be, it should sound something like, like, if this is just a descriptive study, then it should sound something like understanding the um, 
critical success factor in a creative industry a case of wayang kulit okay so if you want to tell that this is this study is very specific to a specific context okay you try to first tell them what is the general theme of research okay so this is about creative industry and you are talking about critical success factor and then you tell them this is a specific case of why and kulit performance in indonesia okay so this is a more sound um title okay you might think that title is very um is is something that should not be um focused on but you might be wrong because okay this is the first thing that editor looks into we look into the title in order to first understand if the paper fit with the aim and scope of the journal or not okay okay um and then we look into the abstract okay um um i don't know I, i don't think i have enough time to explain everything um uh section by section but as i said the two most important thing is the originality and relationship to literature okay so what is originality the first thing that you need to do in order to emphasize on the originality is you need to tell what people have done on that specific topic in your topic okay most of your paper most of the papers that i see they don't talk about that um um i don't know maybe i should, I should just give the example from my paper um uh let me just give you um sorry for a second okay remember dr bayu said that you need to be humble in your paper okay never use a very strong word like this is the first paper that have done this etc okay so how to be humble the, the very basic strategy is you need to acknowledge what previous people or what previous study has done okay so for example Okay um this is some common words or common sentences to show you that there's a gap and in order to highlight on the gap you need to acknowledge what people have done before okay so this is a common example something like at this point there is adequate evidence regarding blah blah okay meaning that you acknowledge that people have done something about your area and okay you don't You, you you need to be as i said humble by saying that people have done something about that about this this area you are not the first one definitely if you are the first one then definitely <laughs> you're not um progressing or advancing anything you're starting from zero and nobody would would care on that okay and then okay so first you need to tell them what people have done in the area and then only you tell what is the gap however these are the as i said common words or sentences used in order to tell people what is the gap of literature however okay the, this this word however follow suit the previous sentence about what people have done is actually signaling to editor or reviewer that you are about to tell what is the gap that you try to address okay then you tell however this is something however so this sentence explain that this is what people have not done yet that you try to do in your paper okay so in order to fill this gap then you come up with the objective of your paper sorry dr okay. abu sorry uh, can you zoom in your uh, your screen can oh, you zoom okay. in the top so we can see the font okay sorry okay so again 
at this point is about telling people what people have done okay and then the next sentence will be what people have not done okay and you need to tell that why by not doing this by by having this absence or, or, or gap in knowledge we are losing something in in our knowledge okay uh, let me just give you another example um, Uh, don't don't worry, I will finish on time. I promise you. <laughs> okay, so this is another example. Um, okay, so what you can do. Um, okay, so. Um, Again, you just introduce the issue first and do not introduce with context, you know, like um, I show you just now, you are directly talking about Japanese leadership. No, this is not the right way to tell the reader about your paper. You need to tell about the general theme about the research idea. Okay, so this is about the effect of religion on entrepreneurship. Okay, so you tell the reader this is the paper about religion and entrepreneurship. So that is the field of research that you are contributing to. Okay. So this is what people have done before. In recent years, a niche but growing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this is to tell readers or editors or reviewers that this is what people have done before. To tell them that, that you are actually following the very recent literature. Okay, and then another word to show that you're humble is you need to acknowledge the contribution of that previous study by having sentences something like, although this line of research has progressed substantially, meaning that you acknowledge, yes, yes what people have done are very great, um, incredible. They have uh, advanced the knowledge uh, very far, but they are missing something, which is the impact of religion as a measure of social contact is relatively less studied. Okay, so this is a gap in literature that you try to to tell um, readers. Okay, and then you make sentences something like we challenge that standard. Okay, just to tell them. Um, that uh, this is what you want to contribute from your paper okay then only you introduce with the objective of your paper okay so you need to use strong uh, not to say strong word but bold sentences okay to expand on the existing work on this topic this study focus on islam to examine the relationship between muslim population and entrepreneurship activity across nation blah 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 Okay. Dr. Abu, sorry yes. to interrupt you again. Yeah. Uh, can mm -hmm. you speak louder? Oh, okay. So you don't. can hear clearly. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that you need to just have your own dictionary or your own, um, say, your own um, book or small book where but you keep all these strong uh, sentences to be using repetitively in all your papers. Okay, you need to use uh, these words over and over again. It's all about uh, acknowledging what people have done before. Okay, be humble, like although this line of research has progressed substantially. Okay, we challenge that standard, something that you know, okay, to expand on existing work. Okay, so you can use or you can keep these sentences to be using in all of your papers because this is very, not to say powerful, but this is very clear that once we editor or reviewer read this, we know that, oh, you're about to talk about, you're about to tell us your objective of your paper. And lastly, obviously, 
the contributions of your paper. Okay, this is extremely important. And more important is that to tell them that you can just you cannot just tell them that oh nobody have talked about Japanese um Japanese um leadership style for example okay nobody have done that simply because nobody cares you need to tell them what we are losing by not knowing what is Japanese Japanese um, leadership for example okay so for example in this paper I focus on um, Islamic religion or Islam or Muslim Okay, this is mostly neglected in previous study, and I don't stop that. I don't just tell them that um, less attention has been given to Islam in in research. No, I tell them why why Islam is an important context which has been neglected in previous study. Okay, so I tell them that. Okay, yes, I focus on Islam for several reasons and why. Okay why it is important to study about islam okay because this is islam is the second largest religion and more importantly because islam is most homogeneous religion okay because 90% of muslims are sunni okay as compared to christianity they have different sect um, catholic or protestant or java witnesses etc okay so that what makes islam as a context to be studied is very unique and it can be a contribution that worth um, attention of the readers okay um, so i support the reason why islam is a big contribution of this paper by the factual aspect as i said because this is the second largest religion as well as from the academic or literature perspective okay because as i said because previous work have mostly mention or focus on western christianity christian and less on islam okay so i guess um this is something that i can um, tell you mostly important is the introduction of your paper because uh, before we go into the literature review part we always focus on as I said, it starts with title, okay, your title and then your abstract following the format of your um, of your journal. As Dr. Bayou mentioned that this is a standard uh, abstract if you want to publish in Emirate journals, okay, and then we look into, let's say, let's say your title in your abstract is 50-50, like, uh, yes, um, this is bad, but maybe I should give you him or the author more chance, okay. So we look into the introduction, okay? We need to have a clear idea where you position your paper, okay? You, you don't talk about, okay, let me just give you um, another um, the similar example just now. Uh, I, I will just finish in, in, in two minutes, okay? Okay, so, um, okay, so it's not a good, it's not a good way to start with this study develops a model for, you know, you should start with what is the main theme of your research. Okay, you should start with creative industry is very important in business nowadays, government are focusing more on creative industry, blah, blah, blah. And then you start telling them what people have done before, okay, and what people have not done. And there is the room for you to improve from your paper. Okay. So normally as an editor or even as a reviewer, we stop at the introduction. We can normally decide whether to accept um, as an editor, whether to pursue that paper for reviewing or to reject straight away. Okay. Or for reviewers, we, we know that whether we want to give a uh, uh, chance um, to the um, author to revise or we want to reject the paper okay by looking at the introduction normally we stop here okay so that's the reason why i'm telling you that it's extremely important to be um, to be good in writing your introduction okay so for that i'm thank you very much and sorry for taking your time um, and i pass over to uh, uh, miss jefferson thank you 
Thank you so much for your uh, valuable knowledge, Dr. Abu. Let me take some keynotes from this session. So in determining the good journal, we have to get information about the journal ranking based on the standard of our country. And then Skimego journal and country rank is a good web website to look for good journal and check the quartile of the journal. As an editor, they may reject the paper if they do not follow the format of the journal and the paper is not presentable. But if the editor or if you want to give a chance, they may check the introductions. The title also should be clear, more academic, and not too specific. And then Dr. Abu also share about how to add originality in our research is to acknowledge what previous researchers has done. Then we can use some words like however, then mention what people have not done, and we can add why we have to do this research. Dr. Abu also share his experience as the supervisor for thesis, where the student need to have basic and strong foundation that allows students to explain the research more detail. For a student, especially PhD student, we have need to have adequate English proficiency where we can learn it through process. Thank you so much, Dr. Abu, for your uh, valuable knowledge. Thank you for sharing to us. Now we are moving to question and answer sessions. I will pick up uh, some of the question from the chat feature and also from the registrations. Uh, we received a question from Agus Puji Priyono and also Guntur Habioso from Indonesia. They ask about how to change the format, uh, the thesis format for qualitative research. So Dr. Uh, Bayu, could you please share how to change the format of our thesis for qualitative research? Okay, uh, thank you, Mrs. Deti. I think uh, the same way like we uh, adjust our thesis yeah, in a quantitative one. So we need to follow the format of the journal. So as I mentioned, we need to state, uh, we need to uh, list the target journal. So what is our target journal? Uh, but uh, there is one journal that focus on qualitative study. We can follow the journal in finance as well. I noticed there is one journal in qualitative one, yeah. But it's not necessarily only in the qualitative journal. We, can submit our qualitative studies to the more quantitative like Pacific Basin. There is also some papers in qualitative, yeah? For example, papers uh, by Narayan Survey on Islamic Banking and Finance, yeah? So that is qualitative. But the things is uh, we need to, as I mentioned, cite it from reputable journal. So if we want to uh, do the qualitative study, so what is the method? Because many method in qualitative study, yeah? for example, you do the uh, article review. So article review based on what? Based on rank of the journal, based on the publisher, based on the index. Yeah? We can get the insight from the previous studies. For example, the paper that I've mentioned, survey in Islamic banking and finance, that is based on the paper published in A star or A rank journal by IBDC in the theme of Islamic banking and finance. So only 114 papers from seven, uh, from seven I think, uh, if I just want to share yeah, the, the, the article. Can you see my uh, screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, So this is a qualitative uh, study yeah, in the Pacific Basin as well. So a survey of Islamic banking and finance literatures, issue, challenges, and future direction. So this one, uh, this one is only 13 pages and abstract is very short. Yeah? As you can see here, less than 100 words and focus on the 112 papers published in these kind of journals of finance yeah, uh, in the last four to five years. And we define a good journal as those journals rank A and above by the 
Australian Business Student Council. A and above meaning that A and A star, yeah? only N, A and A star. And this Pacific Basin is uh, A journal. So your method is clear here that you only focus on 112 papers published in the last four or five years and only in A and A star journal. So this is qualitative. Yeah? Uh, only uh, divided or, or grouping papers into one sub team bank performance, efficiency, blah, blah, blah. Then you provide a future direction. Uh, what we have, what, what have we learned from the papers about asset pricing, yeah? Uh, it just, you just uh, do a distribution of inside banking and finance based on the topics. So people may know what area that has been covered by the previous authors. So this kind of papers, article review, it will be give a higher chance to get citations because people will look at what previous study have been done in the asset pricing, in the bank performance. Oh, I know that uh, bank performance is the majority of previous articles. So maybe I could work on the ethical issue or other topic like Islamic microfinance or you may get insight if I write about bank performance, the chance is higher to get accepted because at the current, uh, current uh, uh, papers, bank performance dominate the, the, the literature. So this may give uh, insight for the, uh, for the authors, yeah? for the uh, scholars. So I think uh, that is the, the the tips, yeah. So you just follow preview study on uh, qualitative study from a good journal or your target journal, and follow the method, yeah. If you have done the method, because in Indonesia the qualitative study is a bit uh, different, yeah. Some uh, scholars or professors they have their own method. Make sure that your method is uh, part to the international standard or at least follow the standard in international journal. So not really uh, different yeah? or make sure that it's less biased because some of the qualitative in Indonesia also bias only interview some uh, key person or respondent. Then you conclude in the very big or large issue or you conclude that in general, blah, blah, blah will influence this one. Maybe X will influence Y. Uh, uh, so we have to make sure that our study is uh, less of bias. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that is for me. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Bayu. Um, we received a question about um, does a research methodology also important for an editor? So maybe Dr. Abu, can you please uh, answer that question? Do you really consider the research, met research methodology? when you review the articles? Uh, so obviously, methodology is important. So I think there's no question about that, but it depends on the standard um, of the journal, I would say. Um, I think Dr. Bayu um, would agree with me that when I review a paper, normally, oh, definitely I look into the journal itself. Like, um, of course you cannot evaluate or you cannot review a paper from a, um, say Q4 Scopus um, journal. Okay, so your expectation won't be the same as if you receive paper from top journal, from A journals, for example. Of course, you have two different uh, two different expectation, right? So, uh, to be frank with you, if I receive uh, papers from A journals, so methodology is something that can be decisive. Um, decisive meaning that they can have a very good introduction literature review, especially if they are coming from, as I said, English countries, so they're good in writing. So the methodology can be decisive whereby that can be the, the point where I should decide to give a chance or to just reject the paper. Okay, but to be frank, if I receive um, articles from um, Scopus journal, especially the Q3 or Q4 journals, uh, that methodology does not play much important as as important as clearly explaining your originality or you know at the introduction so it depends 
it is extremely important in a journals but not not to say not important but not as important as you know so i guess that's a fair fair answer from me okay thank you so much for abu um we also received a question from lukmanul hakim is software translator like Gam grammarly fulfill international journal standard for proofreading process what do uh, do you think about that dr abu uh sorry can you repeat the question yes. Uh, is software translator like Grammarly fulfill international journal standard for proofreading process? Mm, I would say no. We definitely, uh, again, as I said, it depends on the journal that you receive from. Okay, if you're receiving from a journal or so good journals, definitely I will I will stop at the introduction. If I think that the English is very poor, I, I'm not saying that because. Obviously, I'm as I said, I'm not a native speaker, so I, I can easily know that this is a native or non-native speaker um, author. So I, I will not discount on that. Meaning that it's fair. It's fair to also uh, receive. Um, sorry. Okay, so um, it it's fair to have um, certain expectation for non-native speaker. Okay, but we can easily know that if it is a mere translation from Indonesian language to English uh, language. I, I I receive few, I mean, at general of um, general pengurusan, we receive few, which, which I think English is not very sound, you know, like it's very weird to see that even if you're not good in English, but we can easily know that this is a mere translation that you use software, Google Translate, just to get more papers from your original English version, um, Indonesian version, and then you try to submit another article in English version. So um, I would suggest you, if even if you want to do that, at least submit or send your paper for proofreading um, service. That would be, I would say, more safer, safer way rather than just translate using software and then send to a journal. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Abu. Um, we also received a question for uh, Dr. Bayu. This is from Sanju, Sanju Kumar Singh. How to uh, synchronize the introduction and literature review okay, in uh, the thesis? It depends on the journal, again, if some journal, they don't really have a special section on literature review. So we can have our literature uh, review include in our introduction. And the important thing is we need to uh, discuss more about our study, about our research. Of course, we need to acknowledge the previous studies in the beginning or to uh, to give uh, some uh, insight to the editor in chief or to the reviewer that we have done the study on previous literature, but uh, we need to highlight our uh, own study. So, what is the motivation? What is the novelty? What is the uh, research gap that we want to uh, fill? Yeah, in the literature and uh, some yeah, of my ini istri antum ini ya. Uh, some of my current articles, I don't have a literature review. So my literature review, I include in the introduction. Uh, rather, I put a special section on why Indonesia. So for example, like uh, Dr. Ayub uh, uh, give, a, I agree with him that we don't talk, uh, don't discuss the specific one, like wayang kulit. Maybe we can give us one section or subsection about uh, Indonesia, why studying Indonesia, why studying wayang kulit, what is the important studying wayang kulit in the creative industry. That is more important for the editor in chief, for reviewers to know the motivation why the author choose wayang kulit as a representative of create, creative industry in Indonesia. And the leadership in the, in the wayang kulit show or performance probably. So it depends. Um, some journal, they don't have literature review, but make sure that all the flow of introduction and uh, quote and quote literature review or previous studies uh, is smooth and in a good flow. 
and it's clear and the clarity also clear. So uh, it's like selling your paper, selling your paper to the editor itself, selling your paper to the reviewers. What is the key feature of your paper? What is the features that really impress uh, editor in chief and the reviewer. So you, you need to polish. And I just want to add about the Grammarly. Grammarly is not enough, yeah? Uh, so uh, the Grammarly software only uh, very limited, very limited. So even the top scholars, the one that I know published more than 300 articles in Scopus still use the proofreading service, yeah? Uh, why? Because, uh, he or she needs somebody else to read his manuscript, yeah, to read to to have a different uh, perspective. So it's not a shame for us to use proofreading service. Yeah, it's a normal for us, even for the native as well. Sometimes they send it to the proof uh, readers as well. But make sure that we already uh, write in a good English, in the standard English, like international journal standard. So the it will not take. Uh, time for the proofreaders to police our manuscript and to 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 make sure to or to guarantee it's accepted but the proofreaders proofreading service they're not guarantee yeah? uh, they're not guaranteed to get accepted but sometimes they guarantee if the issue is about english then you can send it back to them for free service or to refund uh, your money yeah i think that's that's all all right, thank you so much, Dr. Bayu. Uh, I will pick the last question for Dr. Abu. From Bambang Sutrisno, UMJ, how to present a good abstract to attract the editor? Um, well, that's quite a general question, but um, I would say, um, as I said, you need to have key, uh, key things to do. As I said, first, you need to position the paper, meaning that you need to tell that this paper is based on what area, okay? So I think to be fair, maybe I can just share some of the, um, some of the example. I, I always use this formula for all my papers, okay? First, um, okay, so I need to acknowledge here that um, I acknowledge that uh, the way you write in finance and economics journals is slightly different than the way you write in business and management journals, I would say, um, that way, because um, I'm not sure Dr. Bayou um, is following the same uh, standard, but um, I, I have a um, few papers that submitted to economics journals, so sometimes they don't, have, they don't even have hypotheses, you know, so they're just descriptive, but it's just about a robust manipulation of data robust test of your data, okay? So uh, to answer that question, so abstract, you need to be very structured, okay? So first, as I said, you need to follow the same formula whereby you need to tell what is the gap of literature. So that's the first thing you do, okay? By first telling what people have done before. So although the effect is well documented, so this sentence is actually telling people what people have done before okay and then you need to tell what is the gap of literature okay by having words something like remains overlook meaning something that understudied etc okay and then you need to tell that why by not knowing this we are missing something so i'm telling them that understanding this context is important because blah, 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 okay? So this is kind of like contributions of your paper. Then you tell the objective, okay? So the, put, the third part is objective of your study. And then you tell the result. Of course, you tell the data, some data, okay? And your result, we found that. And then the sort like conclusion. Okay, uh, let me just share another example to show you that this is a, exactly the same formula that I always use for all, almost all of my paper. Um, okay. 
Okay, so this is another paper that um, I use almost the same, but this is um, uh, something a little bit different. But what I'm trying to say that you need to have the key point here, meaning that your objective, okay, your uh, data set and your finding. And lastly, what it is the concluding part, the very one shot and concise sentence about what is the summary of your paper. Okay, so in this paper, I tell them that social participation is more prevalent in countries with greater societal resources. Okay, so um, to answer that, I think uh, we need uh, more time, but what I'm trying, trying to tell here is that you need to have a very, all the key points need to be there. What are gaps of, gaps that try to fill your objective, your finding. Okay, so as well, uh, as long as you have these key components, I guess that's very clear to um, editors and reviewers what uh, this study is all about. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Wiwi, do you have any uh, comments or a question for the speakers? Thank you very much, Ibu Deti. Uh, I would like to ask uh, to Dr. Bayu. Okay, from your experience, since uh, you have uh, many publication, do you use your publication uh, for your literature uh, review uh, to the to to your new manuscript? And number two, uh, I have received a Q1 acceptance letters. Uh, usually, how many months to wait until it is published? And then number three, uh, is it possible that uh, 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 Scopus uh, will directly accept the manuscript without any review from the reviewer? I think that's uh, Ibureti to Mr. Bayu or maybe Pak Abu can answer as well. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you to Dr. Wiwi for the question. Uh, for your first question about the citation, of course, if the uh, new study is still related with the previous study, we can cite it. Uh, but if it is different, we we couldn't. Uh, I think it's not uh, good to cite it different study. Yeah. So, for example, my extend my PhD can uh, produce uh, three scopus uh, and plus one uh, uh, student project yeah so for scopus so all the scopus is about islamic microfinance uh, of course i cited the one that are related to my study but the second project my second project is about capital market islamic capital market so i didn't use my uh, islamic microfinance study uh, probably if it is the general thing like the the growth of islamic finance blah 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 we can still use it but if it is not uh, related we, we, we better not use our previous study and uh, the weight of uh, self-citation, I think less yeah, the point uh, compared to the, uh, uh, the one that's cited by other people. So I think uh, that is the, the, the point, Dr. Wiwi. So if it is related, we can use or cite our previous study. And second question is how many months uh, for the, uh, our article yeah, to be appear in the Scopus or in the journal it depends, yeah. Uh, the Pacific Basin, uh, my article in the Pacific Basin, it took like 30 months, yeah, for reviewing process. Then appear in the uh, article in press for one year, yeah. So it depends uh, because in a good journal they have limitation. For a year they only publish uh, maybe four issues, five issues, and in one issues only nine papers, only ten papers. So we have to wait. We have to wait. Yeah. Uh, my uh, other experience is in the Journal of Islamic Marketing, still in the article in press, and Journal of Economics uh, Modeling and Management. That one is already appeared in the in the in the journal. Yeah. Or, uh, but we can. Uh, it depends on our time as well. Yeah. If uh, the journal. They they don't have a stock for the next issue, so we will uh, uh, we will quit yeah to appear in the journal yeah or to appear in the Scopus. But the thing is, uh, our uh, paper will be available online yeah. 
the ones that we got accepted by the journals, it's just a matter of time, like a week or two weeks, it will be available online. And uh, we can cite, yeah, or somebody else can cite our papers, uh, early citation, early, uh, early paper, yeah, or uh, still article in press, they still can cite our papers. It doesn't matter, yeah. Even still in the article in press, it's okay. And then the third question is, is it possible for submitting to Scopus Journal without a review process? I think uh, we have to uh, be careful about the journal like this because journal also receive, uh, what do you call, uh, monitoring or uh, check by the Scopus or by the other index like Dr. Abu mentioned as CNSR or uh, ABDC. They always check about the review process. Yeah, sometimes they ask about the uh, the proof. Where is uh, uh, where is the the question from the reviewers? So it's to make sure that uh, the journal is following the peer review, because submitting to journal uh, meaning that our manuscript will peer review, review by our peer peer in the same field, in the same uh, area, yeah, in the same area to challenge us whether our study is valid or not, yeah, whether our communication or writing style is follow the journal or not. So it is uh, impossible, I think, for a journal to directly accept without a uh, uh, review process. Yeah, Of course, they will uh, receive. Yeah, So the, the flow is very uh, quite long, Dr. Wewe, for a, a good journal. First is editor-in-chief will receive our journal. Then uh, they can appoint a guest editor. Then the guest editor will appoint a reviewers. Then we'll send it to reviewers. Reviewers will send it again to guest editor. Guest editor will send it to the editor-in-chief. So it's quite a long uh, process. And if all the reviewers accept our manuscript, sometimes the editor in chief or guest editors will send to others reviewers. They still not convince the opinion of the two reviewers. They will seek for the third one, the fourth one. Yeah. The one that I reject yesterday, it's already second review by other reviewers, but I reject it. Yeah. So the, the authors uh, attach the comments from the previous reviewers, but I did not interested, I, I am not interested with the uh, abstract and introduction. So I put a uh, rejection yeah, uh, comment for the manuscript. Maybe the guest editor or the editor in chief will send to others reviewers as well to seek for the second opinion, third opinion. So it is a long process, unlike a book yeah, or book chapter, it's quite simple, yeah. No need to uh, to go on through the double blind review process or peer review process. I think uh, I hope that answer your question, Dr. Vivi. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Bayu. Thank you so much, Dr. Abu. Do you have another uh, opinions? Do you want to add something? Um, no, I, th I I think no. But uh, just to be fair, um, I think yes, yeah, it's very. It's very rare to get accepted without um, a, re, without a revision request from the reviewer. But I know some journals, Index by Scopus, do that, especially those who are asking for publication fees, etc. Okay, I can easily name some of the journals here. But as Dr. Bayu mentioned, uh, just be careful. Okay, uh, yes, uh, it is that uh, those journals are indexed by Scopus, but I guess it will not help to improve your credibility as a, as a professor or, or lecturers later on, especially if you're applying for um, professorship later on. Okay, um, so just be careful with that. But yes, there are journals that are uh, doing that whereby you just pay them the money and then they will accept that. Um, but yeah, uh, just be careful with that, okay? Okay, thank you so much yes. uh, to thank all so awesome much. speakers who are giving of their knowledge and insights about how to convert thesis into journal article indexed by Scopus. It looks like we have covered all or of all of our questions. Dr. Abu Hanif, Hanifa, and Dr. Abayu, uh, thank you so much for your time. Amdila, we are at the end of our session. Let us close this webinar by reciting Alhamdulillah. 
On behalf of the community, I would like to thank everyone who joined us for today's webinar. We appreciate you being here. And don't forget to fill up the feedback form to get an easy certificate. A recorded version of this event will be available in YouTube channel ITME Campus. Before we leave, let's take a photo session together. Please uh, turn on the video. Thank you so much for everyone. Smile. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much uh, for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Dr. Wiwi. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thank Abu. You, Dr. Dr. Uh, and and Dr. Abu. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Abu, Dr. Bayu. Thank you, Ibu Risa. Thank you. Reviewnya di mana ya? Linknya? Di chat. Di chat. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Pak Doni. Ya, Nis. Thank you. Thank you. Joining our webinar. Oke. Okay. Thank you. Eh, the participants, the participants from India, Kashmir. Thank you, Ibu Wiwi. You're welcome. Same, you are the committee as well. Also to Kiki. Congratulations, Bu Wiwi, Bu Deti. Thank you, Bu Risa. I learned a lot. I think there are a lot of questions in the chat. Yes. Because of the time.